is a uh, overview of the RDNet control unit for RCF speakers and uh, DB technologies. So we've got uh, the RDNet 2 just hooked up with USB to a computer. It doesn't take a computer with a ton of processing to do this. And we're just running Ethernet out and just making a chain and pretty much going into our first TTL6 out of it into the second one and then from it down to the sub. Most important thing when you're using this is to make sure that you actually have this in and pushed in. If you don't, it's not going to pick it up. So just make sure those are pushed in and you should see a little scrolling thing that'll let you know that you're actually hooked up to the RDNet device. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. And when it opens up, wait for it to load. And I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, go and go to quick start. And it should run a scan. I just heard the relays kick in on the cabinets. And it should load what is in the cabinets too here. So show and mute status OK. And I've already got it pulled up to where I've got the speaker cabinets over here. I've got a properties window here. So that way when you click on it, it's going to show you the presets for the cabinet. So I've already got both of our TTL6s are going to be in a linear high pass and they're in a vertical array. We do have the TTL6s inverted. It's pretty cool the inclemometer on these actually shows you that this cabinet is upside down and the other one is not. And if you ever want to fool with angles, you can go show object details. You can just double click it also. But it's going to show you down here that top cabinet is at an angle about 0.3 degrees. Which is true because we actually do have it at about 0.2, which is pretty amazing that it's that accurate. And then this cabinet is showing we've got about a negative six, and that's probably about right because we've got it at the end of the uh, concrete over there. But uh, really neat what all you can do with this. So um, we'll go ahead and show you, of course, it's real easy once you have a cabinet selected. You can make groups if you have a ton of line arrays, or let's say you have a ton of subwoofers that you're going to have set up. You can just select however many they are and actually make them be in a group. Uh, if you want to, you can do it one at a time to make a group. You can double click on it, go up to the top, click, put whatever group you want it to be. But it's pretty neat when these cabinets are going, which we'll get some audio going in a minute, you can mute each individual amp inside of it. So we can mute the low frequency, the TTL6 is the mids or the highs to check it out. If you ever hit this solo, it's going to kill all the cabinets except for the one that you have selected. And then uh, if you hit this, you can actually pull up EQs if you want to do something. So we're going to say, I'm going to make sure i got both of them selected for this. That we've got them both selected. And we're going to go into our EQ section here. And you can see I've already set up a filter of an LR. And uh, let's see, on our LR I've got it at 24 dB. I just set it at 100 Hz. That way we can have a nice roll off. Um, it's already doing a little bit of this with that preset, but I like just making sure that we don't have anything to mud up the mains or to suck the energy out of it. But uh, when you're in here, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. We've got the uh, gain is already reduced a little bit. Um, you can inverse the phase. We have the gain reduced because we have these two cabinets uh, and just one 9006 sub. So they're reduced and I've got the uh, sub at zero that you'll see in a minute. But uh, just so much stuff you can do with these. You can see you've got eight filters if you need to do a ton of just weird EQing on it. Uh, but you can go ahead and process and have all this stuff ready. It shows you on uh, the amp sections. It'll show you the temperature. It shows you the voltage going to each one and what's going on with the fans. Of course, I've already talked about it shows you the angle as well. So we'll go ahead and select our sub here. Our sub, you can uh, mute each individual channel to each 18, which is pretty cool. Same thing with it. You can put it with a group of other subs. And I'm just using uh, L4, which is one of the presets. And that gives you 30 to 80 hertz. So it's already doing that, but you could definitely go ahead and set it up as a filter if you rather do it that way. So I've got it at 0 dB. This is also where you can set your delay, and you can invert the phase if you'd like to as well. So a lot of stuff you can do with the software. It's pretty neat. So I'm going to go ahead and play some music.
I'm not going to go super loud, but just to demo it, you can hear the high frequency reflecting off of this aluminum door. So you can see that it's showing the signal that's going to each individual cabinet, which is pretty neat. And uh, you can see it even going to each individual element of the cabinet. So I'm going to double click on this cabinet. I'm going to hit solo. And now that's only going to be the top cabinet that's playing. And you can tell that huge sound difference on it. So now we can go to our second cabinet. We can hit solo on it. So now it's the second cabinet. And then we could go to just the sub. Solo it. Then we've got just some low frequency. And you can move these guys wherever you need to. And it's going to let you know which one's which. We've got 1.1. And then we've got uh, 1.2 that lets you know which top you got going on. But uh, we'll go ahead and clear that solo off. I'm going to mute the subs. I'm going to mute this. And just show you, we're going to mute the lows and the mids. And you can hear just the highs. We'll go ahead and kill it and just do mids. And then we'll just do some lows for you. So it's a good way for you to test each element of your PA and not have to do a ton of stuff with uh, just pulling out, I guess, just uh, anything that's going to be a frequency generator to figure it out. You can just cut the amps to see if anything sounds wrong at all. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that solo, unmute this cabinet, and unmute our subs. So pretty cool stuff. You know, definitely to let you know if you start limiting anything, we'll start seeing a yellow color. Uh, we've never had any faults in any of our RCF equipment to see what a fault looks like, but I'm sure it would let you know. But uh, it's really good just to let you know that you're not going to be maxing out your uh, PA, and you can see when you start to bump limit that you can bump it back down. Uh, a lot of other things that are in here, but that's just kind of a quick start to get you up and going. But uh, the coolest thing that I really like about this is we've got our settings. So we've already got our EQ, we've got everything the way that we want it. If I were to come and instead of unplugging it from there, I'll just unplug it from here. So we've lost connectivity. And it'll show you by turning this bright blue color. But if you were to turn these cabinets off and turn them back on, let me turn this down where you can hear me, as long as you don't switch this back to a preset and you leave it in for bypass then you can keep the settings that you've already set at your shop so kind of a scary thing because if somebody ever pushes it you'd be in trouble but right now we've got our uh, crossover at 100 hertz we've got it set to be a vertical line array or a vertical array of the cabinets and then we've also got our subs set up to where we have that crossover from 30 to 80. So pretty cool that you can set that and just unplug it. So if you were to lose your connection to the Ethernet somehow, the cabinets keep what's going on with them. So pretty cool review, this whole thing. If you guys have any questions, just let us know. Thank you for watching. And one other thing that is good to know about this is you do have two different outputs. So if you want to do one for your left side, one for your right side, or one for the mains, one for the subs, you could do that. But also you have XLR output. So you don't have to use Ethernet because it's just really using three pin. So, I mean, you could build some just Ethernet to XLR connectors. That way you could use it and you could still use an analog copper snake if you had it not having to run another Ethernet cable. But just want to let you guys know it's a pretty cool thing. If you have any other questions, just let us know and uh, give us a call at 256-275-4734.